So this is a short project to show how to make an exhaust wire pipe. So the wire pipe we are making is this wire pipe here for a V8ZJ. So it has um, two halves to go to the left and right of the engine. Now the problem with the aftermarket wire pipe that you can buy is that the ball joints, which are these over here, are actually too small to fit properly on the exhaust manifold. When you tighten this up, you'll find that it leaks. I'm gonna make two modifications. I'm gonna make an improved ball joint socket by using reusing the one from the OEM. I'm gonna enlarge the diameter to have more flow. And I'm gonna put in V-clamps at various points in order to make this thing easier to disassemble. But before we start with the actual fabrication, I wanna show a little bit of mathematics about how exhaust flow and pressure drop works. So a lot of people have been asking what is the size exhaust that I should choose for my particular performance application. And this is quite easy to work out using this formula. So this is the formula for the Darcy friction factor and the head loss in a pipe with turbulent flow. Here we have the calculation of the pressure loss divided by the length. So this is the pressure loss per unit of length. It's equal to the friction factor, which is calculated using a complex formula. But it doesn't vary that much with small changes in diameter. The density, 16 pi squared, the total flow rate in cubic meters per second, and the diameter in meters. And you can see this is raised to the second power, and this is raised to the fifth power. So let's look at an example. Now let's say a manufacturer has shipped an engine which has got 200 horsepower. And we intend to increase this engine to 400 horsepower, so we're going to double the horsepower of the engine. Now the horsepower is roughly equal to the amount of exhaust that the engine is producing. So the flow ratio, the flow rates, and the ratio of the, of the horsepower will be the same. And now we're going to go from a 2-inch diameter exhaust to a 2.65 diameter exhaust as an example. And I've chosen these numbers specifically. So we're only increasing the diameter of the exhaust by 0.65 inches. But this is raised to the power of 5. But if we work this out, we find this is approximately 1. So this means to get the same pressure loss as the manufacturer has in the stock engine, we only need to increase the exhaust by 0.65 inches in diameter. And we can use an engine with double the horsepower. Now my exhaust, I'm going from a 2 inch to a 2.25 inch. And a quick um, rearrangement of this formula, basically I do 2.25 over 2 to the power of 5 to the power of a half. And this gives me approximately 30% more horsepower. So just by increasing the pipe diameter by a quarter of an inch, I can get 30% more horsepower at the same pressure loss. To summarize what this means, it means that I can have an installed engine which has 30% more horsepower, and that new 30% more horsepower engine will have the same pressure loss as did the original engine because of the larger pipe. So note this does not mean that increasing your exhaust by a quarter inch will give you 30% more horsepower. And here's the start of my efforts. So I'm going to show all the different tools and parts that are needed for this. So the first thing you'll need is you'll need a set of um, generic mandrel bent tubes. And this set is about 80 bucks. It comes from for several different types of tubes. It comes with this interesting piece which, piece, which is bent at 45 degrees and then 90 degrees. It comes with some 45 degree pieces. It comes with these which look like they're bent to 160 degrees or something. Um, so it's got really everything that you need. The one thing it didn't have was something bent 22 degrees. So I went ahead and bought two of these. The other thing it doesn't come with, it doesn't come with any straight pipe. So I bought a 40 inches of straight pipe. And then this is going to transition into a 3-inch diameter because the, this is a 3-inch catback exhaust system. As far as clamping goes, these clamps are the best clamps. They have an inner ridge so that they line up perfectly. They do actually seal, although they're prone to warping if you don't clamp them uh, while you weld, weld them. So you have to actually clamp them down like this and tighten them up and then weld in that position. If you don't do that, they'll warp slightly and they won't seal, and then you have to use um, some high temperature silicon sealer to get them to seal, which isn't such a problem actually. I think you should use that anyway. Uh, but they will seal, seal perfectly and they're easy to disassemble, so they're quite a pleasure. This oxygen sensor bung. And these only come in one size, but I would just check your oxygen sensor threads and make sure that you're going to get something that will actually fit. And there's the oxygen sensor. As far as cutting pups, um, this tool 
is an excellent tool for cutting pups. Right. You've got to make sure it's really perfectly square because otherwise you can have a real problem. Um, the next thing you do is you score it very slightly. And then you check the score line to see if your wheels are going through the same score line. And it's a problem if they're not, because then what you're going to do is you're actually going to create like a kind of spiral. So I'm moving the wheel over so that they're both going through the same score line. So that looks good. So now I can just now if you're under the car, obviously the whole exhaust is clamped and then you can use this to cut an exhaust from only one side, which is really useful if you want to get an old exhaust out. Um, but over here you can just go around in a circle like this. So don't even start this job and see what how it is. So that's a very clean cut. The other way to cut is to buy one of these cut-off saws. And this one's between $100 and $200 and it comes from Northern Tool and it basically does everything you want. It can cut 45 degrees. You can actually cut 45 degrees 3 inch pipe, which is the largest we'll cut. It's just perfect for most exhaust applications. So you actually absolutely don't want to try this job unless you've got one of these tools. And the reason is because trying to cut dozens of cuts with a manual cutter like that is really going to kill you. This burr that you have to clean off afterwards. So I'm just going to show how to make transitions. So we want to expand this thing out to three inches. The way to do it is with one of these. So this is a Harbor Freight expander and it, it's a terrible tool, it doesn't work properly and um, the amount of force that you need to put on it in order to get it to expand is, is so high that it's not actually worth it as a tool. But you can use it in a press. You take a socket and you put the socket in there. So you can't do this with pipe that's too thick because it, you'll actually break the Expander. I've broken an expander already now. I seem to have a transition that I want, although you know I've broken this uh, completely. It's only like twenty bucks. I don't really care about that but I do have my transition. It seems to be about the right size. So I managed to get this to fit inside this flange and this is a 3 inch flange so this is what's going to uh, connect onto the 3 inch pipe. So the process is basically you cut a piece of pipe, you go under the car, you mark it with a sharpie and then you tack weld it and then you cut the next piece and then you gradually build up your pipe that way. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is a tack weld with the TIG welder. There's a nice tack weld, and then I'm going to actually now weld a bead. You can see what that looks like. So I'm curious to know if I can stick weld this. So this is a 3 over 32 stick by 7018 and I'm going to try to see if I can actually stick weld uh, these tubes together. So it was at 70 amps and I'm trying to turn it down to 55 amps to see if that works.
that's what it looks like so it isn't too bad but it's still way too hot so I think I'm gonna have to go through much than a stick okay so now we're gonna try uh, 42 amps at 1 16th 6013 uh, welding rod and see how that works right in the middle there is at 35 amps with a 116 6013 so let's get rid of the slag and see if there's a good weld underneath there so if we look there is kind of a good weld there so I think the amperage is still a bit too high so but I think it is possible to actually weld with sticks so let's start again with the first piece of uh, steel and see if we can weld a nice long weld with 6013 right. so that's what happened so it is possible to weld with 6013, it's very difficult, um, you can easily melt through and you have to use low amps, I'm on 35 amps here, I would possibly go even lower. So I'm going to actually tin weld all of my welds from here on and just drop the stick, but if you do have a stick weld and you're very careful and very skilled, I think you can actually weld with stick. Obviously you can't weld the stainless steel, but you can weld the regular steel. So I've set up this vise at an angle and I'm going to try and see if I can drill a, a nice hole in this. I, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. That seems to have made a nice hole, so I'm quite pleased with that. That's awesome. 